The dream of a predator-free mainland, i.e. the South Island, is a step closer with the development of new technologies that promises to wipe out rats, stoats and possums. In fact, this would be over the entire country. Hopefully, eventually, zero invasive predators, a group backed by DOC, the Next Foundation, the Morgan Foundation and Jasmine Social Enterprises, has developed a range of traps and lures that are currently being tested. The most promising ones will be taken to a new predator facility funded by a group of dairy companies for further testing. This really could make a difference. If you're watching online or on Freeview Channel 50, our Christchurch reporter Conan Young visited Zip's research facility this afternoon where he met members Elaine Murphy and Duncan Kay. Now, Conan began by asking Duncan Kay about, wait for it, the automated stoat trap. So this is our trap that we call uh, our Tun 200. So it's a stoat and a rat trap. Uh, so it's pretty standard traps, the Dock 200s, which are um, standard tools for killing stoats and rats. Um, but I guess we've developed the architecture of the box. So if we could, if we look through this tunnel, it, um, it just we look straight through it, so it creates a tunnel. So the rat or the stoat looks through it; they can't see the traps. And some work that we've done previously has showed us that we get more catches when we have that. So um, we've had this trap designed. Um, we've been using this trap since we've been at uh, Bottle Rock, which is our field site. And in the last wee while, we've been working on automating these traps. So um, we want to get to a stage where we can be really efficient with our work. So a human needs to go and uh, get a stoat or a rat out of a trap but they don't need to go and look at every trap to see whether there's a stoat or a rat in there. So we've done the work now to build a little tool that can now report to us each day um, what traps have gone off and then we can go to those traps and service those traps and then get on with the rest of our day. And that'll just make a huge difference in terms of your, your, the efficiency at which you're able to uh, get rid of these little beggars. Yeah, definitely. So it's about efficiency and that allows us to scale up. So it means that we can do large scale work because we're only going to those tools that need to be looked at. So yeah, it's um, yeah, a good leap forward. And so um, I'll get you to actually demonstrate for us uh, in a sec just uh, how effective these traps can be. Uh, they're a little more lethal than your average uh, mouse trap, that's for sure. But Elaine, we've got a another method of um, getting rid of, uh, or at least attracting um, stoats uh, to these uh, uh, traps. And so, so what can you tell us about that? Uh, yes, so traditionally a food lure is used, for, or like rabbit is great for stoats, but that might only perhaps get 90% of the stoats, and we're after every single one. So we've been looking into social lures. So we've been looking at the bedding from around the stoats we have, which has an attractive smell. And we've been doing trials here at Lincoln University. And we have some great videos of the stoats really going to town. On We use these like tea egg infuser things. So you can put the stoat bedding in it. And then we can put them in the traps to attract the stoats. But you can also use it for monitoring stoats because we also want to know, have we got rid of every last stoat? So we, we're we um, trying to develop these laws, and we've been working with plant and food, because the ideal would be to like distill this bedding into a long-life liquid law. So that's our aim. Yeah, so I suppose yeah, you can only get so much bedding, and there's, there's probably not enough bedding to go around <laughs> all of these stoats. Well, we did wonder whether it would be cheaper to have a stoat farm than, than pay for all the analysis. <laughs> And so, look, you've got some bedding here. Do you want to um, just bring that up here? And uh, so this oh, is, yeah. I'm going to get into, put my nose inside <laughs> this and tell, tell the, the listeners, ooh, that's not too bad, actually. No, I know. I was I expecting mean, it not, to be worse. That's right. I mean, like, and stoats are very clean animals. We started off looking at urine and scats because they've had a lot of blank here. They've had a lot of success with that for possums. And with our stoats, they weren't so keen on, on the urine and scats, but they, and they, because stoats are very clean animals, they sort of, they don't, they, they sort of have their latrine away from where they sleep. So we thought, well, perhaps um, other stoats would be interested in where they're sleeping. So that's, when we went to the bedding, it was much more attractive than the, than the urine and scats. And have we got any sort of figures on how much more uh, effective it is than, say, using a traditional um, food lure? Well, we've just done one preliminary trial in the Abel Tasman, and that was, and we caught it was thirteen stoats with the stoat bedding and six with a ray. So it was twice as many, but unfortunately, 
our trial got cut short because they did an aerial 1080 operation, which was great for the park, but unfortunately our trial got cut short. But we're just setting up another one in Lake Rotowiti, in Nelson Lakes National Park, and also in Northland. So we're hoping to get a lot more figures. So that's what we've got to decide. To, to go to try to get that long-life lure is going to, to be quite a commitment, and we want to make absolutely certain that it is worthwhile. Right. Mm. And so, Duncan, as promised, uh, we better uh, show everybody who, who can uh, see this how these uh, these other traps, more traditional, I suppose, traps work. So uh, I'll, I'll yeah. leave it over to you. Cool. So we've got a little magnet that's sitting on here. So uh, it's in class, cased in plastic. It's a bit hard to see, but essentially this is the node which reports back to a satellite, and that then reports to us what's happened. And we'll see it when I flip it over, but it sits on the top here, connecting with the magnet. And when it's connected with the magnet, it says it's unset. Um, but when it disconnects from the magnet, then it tells us that it's gone off. So we can see there, this is sort of what it looks like when it's closed. We've got the node sitting there, and that would be saying to us, the trap's all good, you don't need to visit it. But when we something crawls in, so I'll use my little bit of plastic um, to crawl all in. If we look at this uh, bit of plastic with the magnet on it, it'll <laughs> fall off. <laughs> wow, and nothing survives that. <laughs> no, no. And when it falls off, it'll then report to us that this trap has gone off.